Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beasts Stone Block 3 with another tutorial Let's Play video. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we finished off the chickens quests. We did that by building ourselves a breeder and then using that breeder to breed two different types of chickens together to get a third type of chicken and then breeding two of the same types of chickens together to get a higher level chicken. This episode though, what we're gonna do is we are going to upgrade our storage for our chickens. As you can see, there are only four storage slots on a roost. These fill up fairly quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a storage system to this area that's gonna give us more space and be a much you know nicer and cleaner look to what we've got right now. Now. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the storage tab and then right up at the top, we're going to do the functional storage. Now, this is a nice early game storage system that's very, very similar to the old storage drawers mod. But before we get started, now would be a great time to click on that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time I post a new video to my channel. Also, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support, click on the join button down below. Check out all the perks I got available for my community members, one of which is the supporter shout out. You might have seen these popping up in some of my other videos. Alternately, you can check out my Patreon page. There's a link down below in the description. But enough about that. Let's get back to the video. All right. So like I said, our goal for this episode is to make ourselves a better storage system. As an early game storage system, we have access to the functional storage. This is almost exactly like the old storage drawers. So we've got a single storage option. This is the one that we're going to use for this episode because all of these chickens are only dropping one resource. We don't have multiple resources coming out of them. So it just makes sense just to have a drawer with the one input. But we could have a double drawer or even a quad drawer as well. Plus there's the compacting drawers and the drawer controllers and things like that. It is a little bit more complex on the drawer controller side, but that's something we'll get to in the future. So to make a simple one resource functional storage drawer, it is one chest surrounded by eight wood planks. And then what we can do is we can place this in our world pretty much wherever we want. Now, as an example, I'm going to take this stack of wood. Actually, I'm going to take two stacks of wood out of our log chicken. And then I'm going to go split these up a little bit into a couple of smaller piles. So what we can do is we can go and right click resources into this storage drawer. If we try to put anything else in there, it just doesn't work. And I kind of jumped ahead there because when I double clicked it, even though I didn't have the logs in my hand, it took all of those logs out of my inventory and threw them into this box, which is, you know, really, really nice for, you know, emptying your inventory of a ton of different items, more than one stack that you don't have to go and manually do it one at a time. So pulling out items is fairly simple. If we go and left click on the box, we now pull out one item. So right click enters, left click pulls out. We can go just mash our button down to pull multiple ones. Or if we go hit shift and left click, we pull out a full stack. If there's a full stack available in there. So again, this is really, really cool, but this is a very manual way of filling up these storage drawers. What we want is the automatic system. Now we could do something as simple as taking a hopper and having it hopper into our storage drawer, but you know, hoppers are kind of sort of iron intensive and you know, they're not very nice to look at. And they're certainly not a modded solution to this uh, problem here. So as a modded option, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the pipes from the pipes mod. To make item pipes from the pipes mod, it is six iron ingots, two droppers, and one piece of redstone dust. I'm gonna double up on this because we're gonna need quite a few of these to do what we wanna do. Now, to use these pipes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here, and as a demonstration, I'm just gonna place one pipe right here in, in the space between our roost and our storage drawer. And as you can see, it makes an automatic connection between the two, but unfortunately, it also connects up to the hopper beside it. If I was to put another pipe next to it, we'd have the same problem where all these pipes are sort of automatically connecting with each other, which in a certain situation, you know, might be something that you want to do for our design back here to make this as clean as possible. I don't want that. I want to be able to break these pipes up and control where everything is going. So to do that, what we're going to need is we're going to need a pipe wrench from the pipes mod. So if we type wrench into our search bar, you can see there's a bunch of different options here. What we're looking for is the pipe wrench from the pipes mod. That's going to be two brass rods and two flint pieces will make us this pipe wrench. Now the flint's fairly simple. We've got flint multiple times already from different resources. The brass rod is a little bit more complex. So brass is an alloy of one copper to one zinc 
And I'm just going to get this ready by throwing it into our smelt tree. Once this is done, these two items are going to alloy up into the brass. So we've got two ingots worth of brass here right now, which is perfect. When it comes to making the rod, though, is a little bit more difficult. So we've got four different options when it comes to the brass rod. If we took a brass ingot and ran it through a rolling mill from the create mod, we could get those two brass rods. Alternately, and this is the method we're going to use this episode, is that we're going to cast them using a cast. Alternately, though, we could do this multi-servo press, which we're nowhere near having in our world, or the metal press from the Immersive Engineering. To make the brass rod, though, our first step, though, is to make ourselves a rod cast. So I'm going to take our ingot cast out. We're going to grab some blank sand casts, and I'm going to grab a blaze rod. Now, this is something we got when we were hunting blaze heads in the nether uh, so we could get some of the blazing blood uh, so we can melt some diamonds. If we take one of the blank sand casts, put it in our casting table, we can go place this blaze rod on top of it. It's getting sucked into my little hopper down below, so we can just go pull that back out. But this is a proper rod cast. One thing to keep in mind, there are a couple of other rods in the game, one of which is the stone rods. This is made by putting two pieces of cobblestone together in a crafting table. This stone rod does not match the blaze rods or the brass rods that we're trying to make. So those ones won't work. But luckily, like I said, we've got the blaze rods, which do. So we've made our cast. We're going to go pour that in there. I'm only going to do two of these. That's why I'm using the sand cast and not, you know, bothering to make a gold cast. But there we go, there's our two brass rods, which is perfect. Now, we're gonna take these two brass rods, we're gonna come back over to our chicken area, and then two brass rods in the crafting table with two flint is gonna get us our pipe wrench. Now, this is gonna be important. You are gonna to have to make this to get the pipes to work, because the other thing that we need to use the wrench for is to indicate which side of the pipe is gonna be the input. But first though, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this pipe is only piping from this roost into this storage drawer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shift, right click once. This is now an input. We don't want that. We want to pull that out. That's broken the connection there. Same thing over here when we're connecting between the two pipes. I'm going to go shift, right click. It breaks that connection. Now it is only connecting between the storage drawer and our roost. It's still not working though. If we open up in here, these logs are still stuck. Nothing's getting pulled into this chest. That's because we haven't indicated which side is our input side. So again, holding the shift down, we're going to click on the top and you can kind of see that it's put a little bit of a collar around that pipe. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but if we come out here now, we can see that it is now pulling those logs from our roost, pumping them into the storage drawer. Now that's perfect. I can use this method to fill up the rest of our storage area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch more of these storage drawers. So again, one chest surrounded by planks. From a personal point of view, I don't like how these storage drawers kind of stick out here. So instead of this method here where we're just using the one pipe, I'm going to go break this guy's break that guy, pick up our loose pieces, and then I'm actually going to put this directly underneath our roost here. This will give us a nice, smooth sort of wall rather than, you know, the storage door is kind of jutting out from underneath. This is totally a personal preference. You don't have to do it this way. Whatever way works for whatever it is that you're storing. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and remove this hopper and we're going to replace it with a storage drawer. And then we're going to go remove this chest. We're going to get these eggs. We're going to go pump those in. And there we go. We've now got a full storage drawer there. So really quick, what we're going to do is we're going to go plop the rest of these down. There you go. So those are the 16 that I made. I'm, looks like I'm going to have to make a couple more. Let's come back over here and we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're just going to go fill up all of these spaces with our pipes. Now, the nice thing here is because we haven't, you know, told it which ones are the inputs, nothing's getting moved around. So now I've got plenty of time to come back here, break all these extra connections, leaving just the ones that we want to have connected. Then we can go take our wrench and pull from the top, pull from the top, pull from the top, all the way down. And if we come back around the front, we can see all of these storage drawers are now getting filled up with the resources from the resource chicken. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do. If I go to the quest page, though, we're not quite done on the functional storage page, make a drawer. 
To complete this quest, we've also got to make ourselves a compacting drawer. Now, I don't really have a use for a compacting drawer with our chickens, but where we could use one where one's going to be very, very useful is with our cobblestone generator. So our cobblestone generator is currently generating stacks of cobblestone. If we replace the storage with a compacting drawer, it'll automatically start compacting this cobblestone into compressed and then the double compressed cobblestone. So to build a compacting drawer, we are first going to need any of the storage drawers. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to build a single one because that's what I've got handy. So again, that was the one chest surrounded by planks. I'm going to take that, throw that into our crafting table with five stone blocks, two pistons and an iron ingot. That gets us our compacting drawer. So as a demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to place our compacting drawer here. We're going to go pull our cobblestone generator out. We're going to go place it underneath our compacting drawer. Now, I don't know if this is a nice thing or not. It doesn't automatically pick up what we want to put in here, though. So even though this cobblestone generator should be pushing cobblestone up, this compacting drawer is not accepting anything yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of cobblestone. We're going to prime it with that cobblestone. And now you can see the cobblestone generator is automatically pushing up cobblestone there. It's getting converted into the compressed cobblestone, which is then getting converted into the double compressed cobblestone. So anytime I want to, you know, sort of break down some cobblestone, I can come here and I can just automatically grab one of those two times compressed cobblestone, place it in my world. And I don't have my hammer on me right now, but we can go break that down into gravel and then we would have to manually compress it up again to break it down into dirt and, you know, do all that other stuff. But this is a good, good use for our compacting drawer. So we can go open up that quest book. We now have functional storage, make a drawer quest complete. Let's go grab that random reward, living wood twig. It's kind of interesting. We might get some use out of that uh, shortly here. The other thing that we worked on this episode was on the miscellaneous tab, and that is the pipes mods. So... We completed that quest. There's one quest right underneath it that we might as well do for this episode. And that's the pipe upgrade. Make a pipe upgrade to make a basic pipe upgrade. It is four iron ingots, four iron nuggets, and then one piece of redstone dust. So we're going to take that out. Let's come back over here. And if we go and hold shift and then sort of peek at the input area of our pipe, we get a little bit of a tool tip up top, no upgrade, transferring four items every 20 ticks. We can go take this basic pipe upgrade, right click, hold shift, right click onto the pipe. It's now been placed into our little GUI area there. And as you can see, it's now transferring eight items every 15 ticks. So not going to make a huge difference with, you know, our storage here because, you know, we open them up. They're emptying them out really, really well right now. Like this 10, 10, 10 chicken is producing an absolute ton of wood. You can see it's having no trouble keeping up. But if we had a different sort of system that was generating different resources even quicker, that's one way we can kind of keep things from bottlenecking is by using these upgrades from the pipes mods. So keep in mind, there's a couple of different ones. There's the basic pipe mod, which is the one that we crafted. There's the improved pipe mod, the advanced pipe mod, the ultimate pipe mod, and then the infinity pipe mod, which is a creative uh, version. I don't believe that you can get it in the vanilla game. That completes that tab there. So we've now got our pipes from the pipes mod, random reward, a cog wheel, not super useful, although I probably will find a use for it somewhere. And then one more random reward, a rail gun, which is really, really interesting. It'd be cool if I had a source of power. I don't now. So, and I don't think I've got, I'm going to need to make some ammo for it as well. But that's going to be it for this one. <laughs> that does look really, really cool, though. <laughs> that's going to be it for this one, though. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Okay, so <laughs> that's even funnier there. In any case, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment below if you got any questions about this episode or any question about modded Minecraft in general. Alternately, you can check out my Discord page. I've got a help channel there. But that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Good bye.